Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. It's a great uh, honor to be here. So, I mean, I don't know. I've never met Arthur August before today, but uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, as, as as it will be clear, I mean, uh, uh, I have used a lot of things, and I'm going to talk about uh, uh, some results that he really uh, pioneered, I guess. Uh, okay, so. So my goal is to, to talk about the, 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 the K3 case for two, well, big conjectures, which are the, 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 the following. So I want to, so, so there is a Tate conjecture for surfaces. So let K <coughs> be, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna talk about uh, positive characteristic. Let, let K be a finite field, I mean, you can. Enlarge the setting if you want. Uh, let x be a smooth projective, let's say, surface. Okay. Well, then, uh, well, the take conjecture, then you have a cycle class map from the Picard group of X with ZL coefficients uh, onto et al cohomology. So maybe let me put it that way. So onto the Galois invariant of uh, et al cohomology. So here L is a prime number different from the characteristic of the base field. Um, then this should be an isomorphism. Okay, and the other, so I'm gonna talk about two things and, and I'll explain why uh, I have one, one talk for, for this. And, and the, the other thing, which is more specific, which, which applies to a, a smaller set of surfaces, which is due to Shioda. Here maybe K, uh, yeah, so K uh, is uh, something like well, let's say K is the algebraic so K is a <coughs> field of characteristic P. This is a geometric conjecture, so uh, let's take an algebraic lecture field. Uh, let X over K be a smooth projective Uh, surface over, over, uh, over K. So, so with uh, the two following conditions, so I want uh, X to be simply connected, so algebraically simply connected, so there is no etal, finite etal cover of X, and I want uh, the rank of the neuron every group of X, or of the Picard group of X, if you wish, I want this to be equal to, well, let's say B2, so the rank of H2, X, K bar Z L of one. Okay, so I want, so, so the second condition is that uh, or any degree two cohomology class on X is realized by a divisor, so this should be surjective even, I mean, up to enlarging K, up to passing to K bar, even without the Galois invariant. Well then, okay, so this, the conjecture on the right, I, I, I should say that, I mean, I think there is less evidence uh, for it, but then X is unirational. Okay, and I want to, 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 to discuss uh, a proof, okay, so, 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 recent, so, so recently, it has been, the, the, these two theorems have been proved by various authors for K3 surfaces over, I mean, for K3 surfaces. So, so assume from now on, so that I don't have to say it again, the characteristic of K is at least five for technical reasons. I mean, on, in specific places, you can change it then. Uh, both results. 
cool for uh, key thesis. Okay, so in other words, key thesis of a fine field satisfies the tail conjecture and super single R key thesis, the ones that satisfy the assumption on the right, the assumption of the, on the rank of neuron sevry uh, are unirational. Okay, so, so, uh, okay, so, so, so the goal, so, so let me explain a little bit and then I'll, I'll go back to, to the two things. So these two, so, so I, I'll give, uh, I mean, I'll explain the history of both and who proved uh, this result. I, 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 I say a lot about this. But the first proof of these two results, I mean, the, the, or, or the actually on the right, there is only one proof. Uh, by now, they, 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 they use heavily, well, the fact that KC surfaces have a very nice moduli space, which is, I mean, for general, I mean, in general case, this is some kind of Shimura variety, essentially, up to an open subset, I guess. And super singular KC surfaces have a very nice moduli space that has been constructed by August, satisfy a Torelli theorem uh, for crystalline cohomology, and so on. So, so these two results, for KC surfaces, the, the first proof use essentially the structure of this moduli space. You don't prove it uh, by taking one KC surfaces and, and, and doing whatever, you, I mean, in doing some geometry, you prove it by taking all K3 surfaces in a way at the same time and studying the total family using Torelli, using, using all, a lot of results. And so, so my goal here is to give two proofs, so first of the Tate conjecture and then of a weaker form on the conjecture on the right that works for single K3, that, does, that doesn't use, I mean, that, use, uh, that uses the, 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 the smallest amount of information possible from the fact that uh, KC surfaces are, have motifs that are of abelian types, that there is a Kuga Sake construction, that there is a Shimura variety laying around. I want to take, on the right, I want to take a single super singular KC surface and I want to find lots of rational curves on it. And, and, and what I want to, to explain is that I think in this result, it's, 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 the, the train of thought follows uh, the, same the same kind of path as in the complex case. So in the complex case, uh, um, Shafarevich and Piatetsky Shapiro prove the, to the global Torelli theorem for KC surface. This is a huge uh, accomplishment of classical Hodge theory. And, and, they, and they proved it. So the, the first proof was, I mean, there is a lot of things, but it relies uh, in a specific analysis of uh, Kummer surfaces, of specific examples that we understand very well of KC surfaces, and, and so on. And, and recently, uh, in the complex case again, uh, Verbinski has given a very large framework uh, based on more complex, uh, like complex analytic geometry that, that gives a sort of a general reason for all the Torelli theorem for K3 surfaces that doesn't re rely on any specific K3 that we'd have to know. It works in higher dimension, even for families that are... Can you write down the name of that person? You oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so it's Verbinski. So the result I'm alluding to, so I, I just want, I mean, it's just a sort of idea of why we would care about giving different proofs of these results. Uh, this is the global, to I, I'm, I'm talking about the global Torelli. Just thinking about the Torelli for projective or for complex yes. analytic cases? I mean, there is a global Torelli for, so, uh, hold on. Uh, so global, I, I'm talking about, so Verbinski gave a proof of global Torelli for uh, so-called hyper, for compact hypercolor manifolds which has different versions, whether you want to be in the projective case or in the complex analytic case. So, so he, has a, he, he first proves it in the complex analytic case, and then this can be specialized to, to the projective case. Okay? And, and, I, and, and this is a very, so, 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 uh, so this is a very striking result, even for K3, in that you don't have to know any specific K3 to prove it. You just have to know the definition of a K3, but you don't have to use uh, abelian surfaces or anything, on, or any, Specific result, which was not the case for uh, Pietitsky Shapiro. This doesn't fit into your into the, into the uh, No, 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 it doesn't. But I want to ask oh, so sorry. in to, to prove the Torelli theorem for super genial K3 surfaces as well, can you use the same methods to try to avoid the use of the reduction to yeah, Yes, I, 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 I'll say something about that at, at the end. So okay. So 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 I so 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 the, the two so, so I want to give a proof of these results that relies on, on, on uh, ideas from complex geometries about the, the global geometry of hyperkernel manifolds. So, so of course, this is in characteristic P. The, the, what we know is in characteristic zero, so there will be some 
some subtleties, but that's, that's the idea of the talk. So I, I want to be a, a little bit broad and I mean, there will be some survey. Okay, uh, so, so, so the first thing is the take conjecture. So let me write it once more. I, I, I mean, there are many authors to cite, so I, I put them after the theorem. So K3 surfaces over finite fields. Okay, here I guess I can say of characteristic at least three satisfies the conjecture above. Okay, so, so you know, I mean, so, so, so the history is of course, uh, Tate in the late 60s gave a proof of the conjecture for abelian varieties over finite fields. Uh, and then the next, I mean, if you sort of look at the classification of surface, the next interesting case uh, and hopeful, I mean, hopeful case uh, is the case of K3 surfaces. And there was some progress that I, so, so, so that I want to say. So there is maybe two results. So there, there is uh, Tate plus um, an improvement of Zarin that does the case of abelian varieties. Then there is uh, Artin and Swinot and Dyer. Uh, who, who did uh, elliptic K3 surfaces. And so this is one train of thought that I'll come back to. And on the other hand, on, so this is, uh, 70, this is 69, this is 73, so this is quite fast. And on the other hand, there is another train of thought which starts, I think, with Nygaard and Nygaard August. So, where they prove the case of x of finite height. Then Molik and, well, and then myself. Uh, so much, so this is in 83, I think. This is in, this is in 2012. Do a super singular case. And at the same time, uh, Madame Pussipera, who doesn't just treat, I mean, he just gives a unified proof, there is no distinction. So, so my point, I put two columns, so this is a purely geometric methods. So you start with, well, either your abelian variety or your K3, and you, you, you do a lot of geometry and you get something. And this is, all of these results rely on uh, moduli theoretic method. In a way, all these proofs and, and, and starting uh, with, with the case of finite height is, is not a result, I mean, you derive a result about K3 by proving results about their moduli space, their deformation space. So the way, for instance, uh, the, the case of finite height is proved is that you, you do certain, so certain theory for, uh, <coughs> so, 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 for, exists for abelian variety. It exists also for KFC surfaces. As I mean, first I guess it's in uh, Deligne, Lusi, and Katz maybe. And and so you use uh, cer uh, certain liftings of KFC surfaces to characteristic zero. You use a Kugastake construction, and you use a lot of of properties of the deformation space to to get this kind of results. And and the result of Molik and myself and Madame Pussipera still rely on, on a very uh, precise analysis of, of the moduli space of polarized K3 surfaces or, or variants. And so I want to explain the, the, the left-hand side. So I want to, to, to try and give a proof. Okay, so, so, so I want to sketch an alternative proof. So, so here's the thing. 
So, so the, the first thing to notice is that the take conjecture is not really a statement about, I mean, when you want to prove it, it's not a statement about constructing divisors. It's a statement about finiteness for certain families of varieties, as is well known. So, so recall the Kummer exact sequence. So x here is a k3, let's say. More, of course, more general. So you have Gm mapping to Gm. So let's take this is x maps to x l to the n. And well, the quotient, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this has a kernel, uh, which is uh, the sheaf of n schools of unity, right? And so if you unwind this exact sequence, well, h1 of Gm is a Picard group of x, so you get the Picard group of x mod l to the n. Well, that injects into h2 of x uh, ul to the n. OK, so we get h2 there. And here we get torsion in the Brouwer group. OK. So to prove Tate for x, we only need to show that the else primary torsion in the power group of x is finite. So you, you also have to pass between cohomology of a k-bar and cohomology Yes, yes, yes. But I mean, h1 is your, I mean, yes, you, you, you have to, but here, a, so here h1 of the k3 with the description k-bar is zero. So, so the, I think this is correct as such. So yes, so, so just to check this, you have to do, a, right, to be slightly careful, but I think this is correct. Uh, okay, and this is independent. OK. And OK, so, so the point is that, so, so, so let me go back to the case of elliptic K3 surfaces. How do Artin and Swinton and Dyer do this? So the, the example that I want to To check is the, the elliptic case. So I just want to tell you how this works. So assume x is elliptic, i.e., there exists a morphism from x to p1, let's call that pi, uh, with generic fiber a smooth, a smooth genus one curve. OK, well, then we know, and this is proved in, uh, in Grotendieck, uh, le groupe de Brouwer, uh, the Brouwer group of X. is isomorphic to the Teichafarevich group of the elliptic vibration. Namely, we know that, <coughs> that uh, elements in the power group correspond in a bijective, in a bijective way to, to torsors under the Jacobian vibration of X. OK, so x itself is a D2 Brouwer class of the Jacobian vibration. And from any class in the Brouwer group, we get a different elliptic vibration, which has the same Jacobian vibration, which is the same fibers. And the torsion in the, and if we have a class in the Brouwer group, the torsion in the class is related to the, the, the minimal degree of a section to the index of the generic fiber. OK, so we know that. And then, OK, 
So, the, the facts are the following, the geometric facts. And I, I'll explain how they fit into a, a slightly larger picture. So first, any torsor under uh, the Jacobian vibration of pi is again a K3. So this is a slightly unprecise statement because, I mean, this is not a group scheme. You have to, to remove uh, the, the, sing I mean, the singular parts of the fibers. So the point is that if you, uh, if you uh, restrain to the smooth locus, you take the Jacobian vibration, you take a torsor, then it can be again compactified into a, a K3 surface. Okay. You mean, so is it precisely the neuron model or something else? Uh, yes, I think it is. Okay, so you claim that any torsor on the neuron model uniquely, in a canonical way, compactifies to a... Yes, to K3. Okay, so I, I, I'll give, I mean, I'll give a more general, so, sort of, I mean, I'll give a more general statement a, a little bit later. But this is, uh, this is true. And the second thing is the following. Any such torsor X prime. So take any such torsor X prime. So if you take a, a, a Brouwer class that has very, very large order, then this is going to be a very non-trivial torsor. So the index of the general fiber is going to be very big. But it contains, let's say, a divisor D with self with positive self-intersection, but bounded, so bounded independently of X prime. So you have, on these torsors, you have multi-sections of the elliptic vibration of very, very high degree, but it turns out that the self-intersection, so this intersection has very large intersection with, an, with a fiber, but it turns out that the self-intersection of this section is bounded independently of the order of the class. And the last fact, which is Sandona, which is due to Sandona, um, Uh, what? Yes. So this is the following thing. The family of pairs X D with X a K3, D a divisor with a D square equals D positive. So if I fix this number D, this is bounded. D is what kind of divider effective? I mean, such a D, I mean, up to, up to changing the sign is going to be effective. If, if such a divide, I mean, a divisor with positive self-intersection is going to be effective unless, I mean, up to a sign. Either D or minus D is effective. No, they're about the divider. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I mean, maybe I should put O of D. I don't really care about the specific divider. Okay, so may, no, you're, I was talking about the divisor here because I was thinking of a section, but let's put okay. L. Okay, so this is, uh, and this is because L is close to the ample? Yes, exactly. So of course, if I had put L, I mean, instead of requiring that L square is positive and fixed, uh, I had required that L is ample, then, well, Matsuzaka, Matsuzaka's big theorem is known in the, in the case of K3 surfaces. 
And, and this would be obvious because some power, some fixed power of L is going to be very ample and map, map X into a fixed projective space with fixed degree and everything. It turns out that for K itself, I'll, I'll give an intuition, I mean, I'll give a, a reason why uh, coming from characteristic zero, uh, such divisor is enough to bound the family. It's not ample, I mean, it doesn't have to be ample here, but if you have a divisor like that, you have another ample divisor that has low self-intersection. Okay, okay so, so what I claim is that these three facts, they, they actually generalize to, any, to an arbitrary K3 surface. So first, let's notice that these three facts so you're saying the family of, of pairs X L or L yes. squared is, but L squared the D is supposed to be bounded also, not just the. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, the D. So fix D. Yeah. This family is bounded. So it's it's a, it's a yeah. Okay. So these three facts imply finiteness. No. On fix pi, uh, so, so we are not fixing an ample line bundle, we're fixing this L square, I mean this, posi this smaller positivity. So that, that's the point. So these three facts imply fitness for the Brouwer group of X, at, well, let's say the solution. Well, why is that? Well, if this were infinite, then we would have, well, certainly infinitely many, K infinitely many torsors under the Jacobian vibration. So we get infinitely many K3s that way that are pairwise non-isomorphic. That's, I mean, that at least give infinitely many isomorphism classes. That's not that hard to check. But they all contain a divisor with positive bounded self-intersection that is independent of the choice on, on the, of the power class. And then by Sandona's result, they belong to a bounded family. But we are over a finite field, so there are, are only finitely many K3 surfaces in the parameter space for this bounded family, so we have only, so we get a contradiction. Okay? You can solve the table because we don't see it. There is one there. There is one there. There is one Okay. So I want to explain, and, and I mean, so I want to explain why these, these things generate. What about, excuse me, so that's the, the for uh, going to both from the coarse moduli to actual things, so you, you, you need to know something about automorphism of such X, L? Well, I, I'm not really talking about coarse, mo I mean, about mo a moduli problem. I'm just saying that there is a scheme of finite type over the base field whose, whose, fi I mean, whose fibers over K contain all... No, no but to understand the uh, uh, forms of a finite <laughs> field, you have to understand <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, homology is coefficient in some automorphism. I mean, you, you, here you don't even have, really have to do that. What you, here is, here is what I mean by this. There is another line bundle here that I can cook up from L with very little, with finitely many choices independently of X that will give me an, that will be ample and give me who's, who's, I mean, some fixed power of which will give me an embedding into projective space with bounded uh, this is constructed over the finite field. Yes, you don't have to pass. I mean, if you want to prove this result, you don't have to pass to the geometric. Uh, I mean, to k bar and then descend. You don't even have to do that. You just you essentially. I mean, if L were ample, you would say, well, maybe so some power, maybe L three, I think, is am is very ample and give me an embedding, and then I control the degree. And I'm otherwise, ample. you could say that curves of genus one is a bounded family, but there are infinitely many. Yes. No. 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 Of course. Of course. Of course. But. This, this is not what, what I mean here. Uh, okay, so, so, so this is a talk where I want to talk about two results. So, so I, I want to give, I mean, what I want to explain is how you can prove, I mean, why these two facts generalize to a K3 that is not elliptic in a suitable way to give finiteness of the power group. So for general K3. So essentially, we need two things. We need, the, we need a, a, a geometric interpretation for, the, for classes in the Brouwer group. From a class in the Brouwer group, we need to construct an auxiliary variety. Here it was a torsor under the Jacobian vibration. We need to do something else. 
And the second thing is we need a suitable criteria for pairs XL, maybe X is a K3 or something else that I will, that will come up from the bound group. We need a criteria for some kind of boundedness, some kind of bounded families. And even here it's clear that ampleness is, is not gonna cut it, it's not enough, okay? So here's what you do. So we can do the same thing. <coughs> So, well, what do you do with uh, the class in the power group? Well, you construct a modi I mean, you construct a modular space of twisted sheaves. So that's, that's uh, the key thing. So this is a theory that in, in, this, in this setting has been set up by, uh, by Livlish a lot and by other people. I think Martin will talk about related things later. So first step to any class. So in the power group, of x, so any class, let's say, uh, alpha n in the l to the nth torsion of x, we can associate a moduli space of sheaves that are twisted by alpha n. So of alpha n twisted sheaves. So I don't want to, 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 to get too much into what a twisted sheaf. Invertible sheaves? Invertible sheaves? Oh, no, I, I'm, not re I'm not even that. I mean, uh, well, now I, I j didn't say, no, I'm just talking about twisted sheaves. I mean, I can vary the rank. What you say, the rank of the twisted sheaf? I'm sorry, what? Modular space of twisted sheaves of rank something? Well, I mean, we can associate lots of moduli spaces by specifying the rank, I mean, the, the, the whole churn character. I'm not, I mean, right now, I, I, of course, I have to fix the numerics of this at some point. Or well, maybe I, so we can associate moduli spaces of alpha and twisted sheaves. So, so here's the thing. A class in the power group corresponds to a mu, n, so a mu L to the n gerb over x. And twisted sheaves are sheaves on the gerbs that are compatible with the mu L to the n action. Another way of saying that is that if you get a twisted sheaf, you take the, <coughs> you can take the projective, you can projectivize it, you get a projective, well, projective bundle or the coherent sheaf version of a projective bundle, and that's what you get. Well, we can see this, and, and so the fact from deformation theory, this is due, I think, to O'Grady, and Yoshioka, so the result, I mean, the result in Caltech is zero, but you can, I mean, it's a deformation theoretic problem that you can, uh, <coughs> that you can get around. Uh, moduli spaces of twisted sheaves on a K3. Okay, for uh, suitable chunk classes. They are smooth, proper, and they are even a little bit more. They are, they are well, they can be, I mean, the, the dimension when they are not empty can be as high as you want. It's always even. They are always symplectic, namely, the global section of omega two are always generated by a symplectic form, by nowhere, everyone on degenerate form, and they are also are simply connected. If we were over C, then this, this would be what we call a holomorphic symplectic manifold. You know, over a finite field, I don't want to give a definition for holomorphic symplectic manifolds because I don't really know what that is, but we get this. And the point is that torsors under an elliptic vibration are an example 
of moduli species of twisted sheaves. You can write the moduli problem that also satisfies. They are indeed twisted by the same power class, and you can, you can cook it up. And so the fact that any torsor under the Jacobian vibration of pi above is again a K3 surface just, is just a special case of this very general fact that originates the work of Mukai that moduli problems for sheaves on a K3 tend to be uh, unobstructed and represent, I mean, and give a, a smooth moduli space. And better, we have good numerics. So here is a numerology that I want to give you. OK, so define each tilde of x, let's say x k bar, the now to be this way to uh, this way to uh, the module uh, h2 of x x0 x k bar z l plus h2 x k bar z l of 1 plus h4 x k bar z l of 2. So this is what we call the Mukai lattice. OK. So I want to look at the algebraic part of the Mukai lattice, and I have a twist. I mean, I have a, I have a power class, so everything is twisted. So here's the numerology that I want to give. Let alpha in h2 of x uh, zl of 1, and alpha n its image in the power group of x. OK, so we can map this to h2 mu, uh, mu l to the n, and this maps into the l to the n torsion of the power group. Then define the following space. So define the following subspace of this, define n, so alpha n of x to be the following thing. So we're going to take, um, we're going to take the following space, a l to the n, d plus a alpha and c omega. OK, so what is what does that mean? So a and c are two integers. d is in the neuron Sevre group of x. Omega, this is the fundamental class. OK, and this, an alpha n of x, is a subset of h tilde, right? OK, well, the first belong to each zero, the second thing belongs to each two, and the last thing belongs to each four, right? OK, so why am I writing that? Well, if f is a twisted uh, alpha n twisted sheaf on x, well, this is a space where its characteristic classes live, OK? So the, for instance, the rank of, a, of a, twist, uh, a sheaf twisted by a class of L to the n's torsion is going to be divisible by L to the n, for instance. This is the kind of thing. So the churn classes of a twisted sheaf, they live, I mean, if you put them in suitable ways, they live in this space, OK? So we can, we get a characteristic class. V of f in this space. Okay, for instance, the rank is going to be divisible by the torsion of the power group. Okay. 
Okay, and then and then what? I'm sorry? But if you have a twisted shift, then it's a determinant for them to, to, to know about C1. The determinant is also... Ah, but it's well, I'm, I'm twisting by the third class also. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm taking something like the churn character of F uh, times the square root of the third class or something for Riemann Hoch to hold. So it's a, you, you have to put the churn classes in the, in the right order for the numerology to work. So anyway, I'm, so, so this is a lot of numerology, but I want to tell you one thing. So fix V now in this group and consider MV, the moduli space of, let's say, stable twisted sheaves. Of with uh, so with v of f equals z. Well, by the result that I just uh, quoted above, this is smooth, uh, a nice smooth projective variety. But then, so if okay. So, so how do I get the numerology of this? H tilde is endowed with a quadratic form. So that we have a quadratic form of an inch two and we added two uh, rank one spaces. I put them as a hyperbolic plane, okay? So this, I mean, this is just cup product on H tilde if you want. So if V square equals zero, MV is a K3 with H2 of MV over k bar, coefficient in ZL, this is the orthogonal of V mod V, mod well, ZL, ZL V. Okay? And if V square is positive, then uh, the dimension of mv is 2 plus d square. Well, I mean, this is always true. And h2 of mv, zl is just the orthogonal of v inside. Yeah, so everything, yes. Uh, I, I wanted to say at some point for suitable v, because I want to be a little bit careful about primitive and rank. I mean, the rank has to be positive and so on. So here is a suitable V. So primitive, the rank has to be, I mean, you have to have a lot of, I mean, some small things so that this is reasonable. Okay, this is the orthogonal of V inside H, inside the Mukai line. Okay, so let's, so let's think of it. So ex let's take an example again. Assume the rank of the neuron severe group of X is at least two. Okay? So find divisors. Okay, find divisors, uh, let's say, D and E with D square equals minus 2D. So I want this to be negative and E square equals uh, equals, well, 2e and the orthogonal, okay? So the, the signature on the neuron severe group of x is 1 and uh, rho minus 1. I mean, this is, there is only one positive direction, so I take one positive divisor, one negative divisor that are orthogonal, okay? Assume the Tate conjecture is false. And find uh, alpha, so alpha in the orthogonal of the neuron severe group of X inside H2 XK bar Z. Uh, I mean, inside H2 of X, I'm sorry, really. 
So it's a Galois invariant. Okay, and choose L, we can assume that alpha square, so alpha square, I want it to be minus, I guess, I, I want it to be 2D. Okay, so you choose L suitably so that you can fix such a class. Okay? Yeah, L is a prime number, but I, I allow to myself to choose L so that this equation in the orthogonal of the neuron savery group has a solution in, in the, the orthogonal in L adic homology. Ah, this you can do by easy, uh, yeah. relatively easy. Yeah, I mean, 2D is going to be a square modulo L for lots of L. Okay, we can assume this, okay, and then take Vn, the following thing, so I look at twisted sheaves, alpha n twisted sheaves with rank L to the n, with a Mukai vector, I think, uh, alpha plus d, and then I take zero, okay, then Vn square, this is zero, this is just because d square is minus 2d, Okay, MVN is a K3. The MVNs are pairwise non-isomorphic. So this is something you can check, for instance, by looking at their neuron savery groups. Okay, this is something that you are able to check. And then the following thing, HN, which is just zero, E0 is orthogonal to Vn, gives a divisor on Mvn with square to E. Okay, so this is, so okay, why, why I, I took some time to, to do that, I'm a, bit, I'm a little late, but this is exactly, without referring to any elliptic vibration, this is exactly the art in swinot situation. We construct a lot of twists of our given K3s that are not isomorphic to each other, and they all have a divisor of positive intersection which is bounded in terms of the, independently of the twist. We get a contradiction by Sandona's result. Okay, because I told you that there are only finitely many K3 surfaces with a divisor of positive bounded uh, fixed self-intersection. Okay, so this is something where you forgot the elliptic vibration, but you need still a little bit of this. So how do you how do how do you how do you make this work if the neuron savery group of X is not at least two? Um, okay, well you cannot take I mean, you have to take a VN, you, can, you do the same process, but let me explain, and then I want to talk a little bit about Shota's conjecture. You want to take VN with positive square. So let me tell you what happens if we apply the same strategy. What happens for general X? So if we don't know that X has at least two divisors, which should always happen about over finite fields, but we don't know that. Uh, okay, so for general X, same strategy holds. Works. We don't know, yeah, we don't know it at all. Well, once we prove the Tate conjecture, then we know it, but we are trying to prove it, so that's, so I cannot use it right now. So the same strategy works. Uh, in the following sense, we get MVN of them, of dimension this time. So if you, are, you have to be a little bit careful about the choice of L, about the choice of Mukai vectors and so on, but you can get a lot of MVNs of moduli like this, let's say of dimension four, you have to go at least a little bit uh, bigger of dimension four with a line bundle of positive. Okay, self-intersection. So this is a little bit tricky, but 
line bundles on these kinds of variety have, it makes sense to talk about the self-intersection and not the top power of John class. This is due to Boville and Bogomolov. Okay, so here's the last thing. So I want to explain to you why these things, why these objects, they should be bounded. So what is it, can you say, tell me what, what self-intersection? So the point is that, the, so, so we have um, uh, four linear, I mean, uh, four linear, four, I mean, so, so the, what I mean is that if you look at alpha maps to alpha 4 from H2 to Z, or ZL or something like that, this is the square of a quadratic form. And the, this quadratic form I call, this is called the boville bogolov form, it is, this is what I mean by self-intersection. In that sense. It's because of something special about the way the same is constructed. So this is something uh, special about holomorphic symplectic varieties over C, but then this is always, I mean, this leaves, I mean, this is translates to characteristic P. So, I want to, so, so yeah, I, I still like to say a word about the, the Shoda conjecture at the end, so, so I, I just want to, get so why are such, so why are such pair, such, Pairs M, Vn, and a line bundle, let's call it L. So the, I claim that these pairs live in a bounded family up to birational equivalence. And once you know that, then you are in very good shape to, to apply the same strategy. If you have infinity many MVNs, well, I mean, if you have an infinite power group, then you have infinitely many MVNs, but they are all birational to one another, up to finitely many choices, and that's enough to, to get a contradiction if you work a little bit. Okay, so I want to give you an argument over C, which, which doesn't work as such in characteristic P, but this is, uh, this is uh, I think, a good reason to expect this. And this also explains a little bit about, about Sandona. So first, step is a result of Heubrecht. is that L, or L dual, is big. So, or, so it's a little bit like uh, for abelian varieties. For abelian varieties, you have easy criteria to verify that a line bundle is ample. This is a Riemann uh, binary relations. Over these kinds of varieties that have a symplectic form, they look like abelian varieties, so we have a numerical criterion to verify that a line bundle, or it's dual, have a lot of sections. So this means that the sections of L to the K go like K to the dimension of the right. So this is a difficult theorem that comes, I mean, that, that comes from complex analysis. I, this, is, this, is, I, this is true even in characteristic P because this is invariant under specialization, but I cannot prove it by algebra. I mean, I don't think there is a proof from algebraic geometry. Okay, so this is the first thing. Okay, so now look at the pair uh, M D with uh, L D is a section of L D if effective. Well, this is of general type. In the log category, this is of general type because uh, well, I mean the the, the line bundle, I mean, the, the canonical bundle is, so this has trivial canonical bundle because it's symplectic, and so the canonical bundle of the log pair is D, which is B. So run the MMP. Okay, so you run the MMP for this pair, what does it do to the canonical bundle? It makes it, well, it, it remains big, but it makes it NEF. Get, so you get M prime by rational to M plus L prime, which is big and F. So here you have to be, of course, a little bit careful because the MMP creates singularities, so you have to be a little bit careful about what you do with the singularities of the variety that you get. But for symplectic varieties, we can resolve, I mean, Namikawa has shown that singularities of the MMP are taken care of very easily. And then, well, for big and F line bundle, you have results of collar. 
not give boundedness for uh, L prime in the sense that well it's not ample but it's as good as ample it, some fixed power of L prime will give you a birational map to a to a variety of bounded degree in a fixed projective space okay so big enough in that setting is as good as ample okay so I wanted to well so so yeah I'm a little bit uh, late on this but so 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 my so 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 my takeaway from this was is to explain why this kind of result that you can translate to characteristic p, but this is a, this is another. I mean, you have to be careful. I mean, this is this is not easy, and and you cannot translate this strategy to characteristic p at the moment. I guess uh, give you an, some insight as to the geometry of the Taylor conjecture. So you can make you can prove the boundedness not by this method of refinement. Here. Okay. So in the five minutes that I have, I want to give you one last. Think about this uh, about unirrationality of K3. So this is a little bit of the same in that there are these difficult results from analysis that sort of come up into the way you can think about, about K3 surfaces. So uh, recall, so theorem, Litka. Let x be a super singular K3 surface. Then x is unirational. So I just want to give you a complex result that really looks like this, and I will explain in a word how you can translate it to characteristic p. OK, so over c. <laughs> Let x be a complex K3, not necessarily projective, well, then X, well, this is a complex variety, so the, the C acts on the tangent bundle of X, but it has a quaternionic action. This is a general fact about K3 surfaces in, 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 over the complex numbers. They are not only do they have a complex structure, they have a quaternionic structure. This is one way of defining it. So then, X has a quaternionic structure. Okay, so th what does that mean? So the group of quaternions acts on the tangent bundle of X. So this means that for any imaginary quaternion, uh, quaternion, we get a complex structure on X. Okay, you choose a, a quaternion imaginary of norm one. Well, it's square is minus one, so this one gives you multiplication by uh, this. Is, I'm sorry, this is complex. You get a almost complex structure on X, which is a complex structure. This is Okay, so what does that mean? So I, I'll go back to characteristic p in the four minutes that I have. I explain why this is this works. So consider uh, the following thing: consider x cross s two. So s two, this is just a unit sphere. So this is, I mean, this is identified with uh, with a space of quaternions, right? Imaginary quaternion, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, imaginary quaternions of norm one, right? And this maps to S2. Well, all the fibers of P are endowed with complex structures. Okay? So you take a point of S2. On the fiber, you put the complex structure given by multiplication by the quaternion parameter by this S2. Okay? And again, so complex geometers know this as a twist of space. So S2, this is, well, at least as a, as a manifold, this is the same as P1 as a complex projective line. So, fact, this comes from 
a morphism from X to, let's say, CP1. I'm really talking about the complex manifold, not the algebraic variety. P, such that this is diffeomorphic to X cross S2. This is the same as S2. OK, and this is a stereographic projection. OK, so this is called a twister space. And the second feature, OK, so we have this. So come with the K3 over C, we have this very specific deformation space parameterized by P1. We have this complete family of complex K3 surfaces. It is not something from algebraic geometry. This is never algebraic. I mean, this is a never, for instance, this large x is never Keller. This is never algebraic. However, let's call this map phi. So the fibers of, OK. I'm sorry, let's consider the absolutely not holomorphic map from x, from curly x to straight x. So this fi the fibers are S2, right? Are just spheres. The f so this is not holomorphic. The fibers are still holomorphic curves. The fibers are CP1 with normal bundle. O of 1 plus O of 1. OK, so the projection, I mean, topologically, this, this, uh, this complex manifold is a product. The horizontal lines turn out to be complex curves in that, with normal bundle O of 1 plus O of 1. Well, now, if you are an algebraic geometry, you think, well, this is a very nice situation. I have this threefold. I have rational curves in that with normal bundle, with ample normal bundle. So this should be rationally connected. So this is not the case, right? Because this is not an algebraic manifold, so we don't have any moduli space of rational curves. We don't have any Hilbert scheme at our disposal. So it's not possible in that setting to prove that this twister space is rationally connected. But Campana used it, used this remark to show that x, well, that some fiber, I'm sorry, some fiber of, how did they call it, of uh, P uh, has an entire curve. So that is a holomorphic map from C into the fiber. Okay. Well, what I want to claim is that we can, so in, if, I, if I can take two minutes, I want, I want to explain that we can do this in characteristic P and we get a rationally connected space. And this is enough to show that super singular case surfaces are, let's say, rationally connected, rationally chain connected, I'm sorry. which is a little bit weaker than, than Shoda's conjecture. But I want to, to give a short, I mean, if you, if you use liberally the, world, the, the work of Leibniz, you can do that. OK, so here is a, a short proof of this. So this is. Due to Leibniz, the following is true. So x over k super singular Okay, so x over k is super singular, then this implies that R2, so maybe let's call that pi is a structure map, R2 pi lower star of new p in characteristic p, this is Representable, so this is the FPPF shift. This is representable by a smooth group scheme with connected component GA. Okay, so this is if you look at the formal Brouwer group of a super singular K3, this was proved by. Uh, Artin, I think, that the, the formal Brouwer group is GA, and then this can be algebraized in a way, in the sense that the, this is not just a formal GA, this is a whole thing. Okay, so now you play with moduli space of Swiss cheese. 
as we did before, but now you vary the Brouwer class according to GA. So for instance, X always has an elliptic vibration, this can be shown, and you vary, you take torsors under, under the elliptic vibration that are parametrized by this GA. So you get a moving family of torsors. So get, so, so this is, I mean, this is by no means trivial, this is really the work of Leibniz who constructs rational curves on the moduli space of supersingular K3, but you get something like this, you get X mapping to A1, like this, a moving family of etal forms of X. Okay, so this A1 is just the GA, but I write it as a family over A1. Okay. Now, it is known by Rodakov Shafarevich that this so, so now we, we use two things. First, by rodakov shafarevich super singular K3 have potentially good reduction. If you work a little bit harder, you use work of Litka and Matsumoto, you can cook up your family X over A1 so, so that it has good reduction. So you, you take inseparable covers of A1 and you, ca you can get good reduction. So get X bar over P1. But the other thing is, is well, we get, it has forms of our fixed K3, but they are all parametrized by, some, by, uh, by elements of GA. So they are trivialized, if you analyze what this means, they are trivialized by an inseparable cover. So here is what I mean. And then I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, but I will be done. Plus a degree P. Uh, purely inseparable map from some x0, which is a twist of x, cross a1 to, let's say, x over a1. So this family is trivialized after a purely inseparable morphism. And so, okay, so let's look, this is exactly like a twist of space, right? You have a moving family, a complete moving family of K3 surfaces, which are all etal, which turn out to be all etal forms of each other, and up to a, well, to a universal homeomorphism, which is this purely inseparable map, it's covered by, it's, a pro, it's the product of a fixed variety and a, and a, and a rational curve. And so what I just want to claim, and, I, and I, I overstayed my time already, is that you can, using this, it's not that hard to prove that the total space here is rationally, let's say, rationally chain connected, or has lots of rational curves, and it turns that the K3 surface you started with by projecting onto it has lots of rational curves. So I don't think you can prove that it's unirational that way, but you can certainly prove that it's uniruled or rationally chain connected. Okay, thank you very much. Some questions? Uh, you mentioned in the course of the, the talk, there was something about DNA. You mentioned that if you know the third conjecture, you will have that uh, at, uh, the rank of the Picard group is at least two. Yes. This is over the Farad field? Or? No, over the over FP bar, over K bar. And this is just done using uh, the, 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 the eigenvalues? That yes, yes. The eigen, I mean, you look at, yeah. Exactly. I mean, this is the, the, the rank of the Picard group. I mean, for if you let's assume the conjecture for variety over FP bar, then the, the rank of the neuron sevre group is uh, is um, congruent mod two to uh, the second Betty number. But you also need some semi-simplicity. Ah, no, okay. No, there's some semi-simplicity. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but here, I mean, here we know semi-simplicity. Is it is just semi-simplicity is. Uh, so K3, is it? Uh, no, it's not known in general, as far as I know. Ah, but here it follows from. It's proved by Deligne, I think. I mean, this is. Stacking. Yeah, by Kugel. I mean. Well, this is the Kugel stacking. When Deligne proves the veil conjecture for K3, he proves semi simplicity. Ah, okay. This was in the se in the seventy. Yeah, yeah. The first uh, the veil. Con I mean, the, this is a. Con I mean, the the H2 uh, of a K3 embeds into H2 of an abelian variety, so. 
in a Frobenius equivariant way. And what are the possible values for the, for the, the whole scenario line? What are the possible numbers? Yeah. Well, I think you can get any, uh, any even number. So all previous proofs uh, of the Tate conjecture for K3 surfaces in uh, finite characteristic, including your own proofs that was published two years ago, used this Cougar circle yes. construction using Clifford algebras. So following your talk today, this does not play any role any longer, or does it somehow uh, indirectly? I mean, Okay, so so I cheated a little bit in hiding that. So 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 the key thing is that is this boundedness result. So I explained how it is known in characteristic zero, but I mean the proof that I gave. It, I mean the technology is. Com I mean I, maybe it will never work, but certainly the technology is not there. So you there is a trick to sort of use Kuga, a little bit of Kuga stake, in a, but in a very weak way to 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 tackle this, this boundedness result. So in a way, you apply, you 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 just note that you can apply Kugelstake to a non-ample line bundle, and, and as soon as a numeral, I mean, as soon as, a, I mean, all this numerology sort of helps you. So it's a very, I mean, it still uses Kugelstake. It doesn't use Kugelstake. So 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 prove that is, so the so for instance, if you know that you have at least two divisors, that's the first proof that I gave, it works in arbitrary characteristic and doesn't use Kugelstake. If you know that you had two, that the neuron several group had would be of rank at least two. And that's, I mean, so that's not completely inconceivable that it's, that there is some nice trick involving graphs of Frobenius or something like that to prove that it's always the case, but I certainly don't know how to do it. Yeah. Another question yeah. is that in your proof, you, in your previous proof, you used some hardcore integral per Adekot theory. Uh, where is this? Uh, yeah, no, this doesn't, yeah. No, no, it's, so this aspect sort of it disappears. I mean, you need, you need just a little bit of Piadic. I mean, you, you need Kugastake so to, to, to say that it varies reasonably or something, but very, it's much easier technically, I think. Oh, yeah. Is it known if the Brouwer group is uh, finite? Uh, yes, I think it is, because once you know the Tate conjectures, then you know that the neuron sevre group is not too, I mean, so, so, so you know, yeah, I think. Because, I mean, you have finiteness for the rank of H2, and for the neuron sevri, so, you, so, so the, the churn class map has to be. Because you, you did only the L primary part. Yes, but I think once you have the L primary part, I think you can get. I mean, you, you have to use probably a result of Milne as well to get the P primary part. But yeah, I think it is. You always took P at least three. Well, well, P at least. Let's say P at least five. Because, for, but no. So so the take conjecture all works for. P at least three, so in P equals two, you really run into problem as long as you want to use Kugastake in any way. So, 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 so for Picard number at least two, you don't use it, but if you're outside of that, I don't know how to do it for P equals two. For the second part, these kind of things, at some point you use rudakov shafarevich and this is, uh, this uses P at least five, I think. But, so this was the question. And I, I, yeah, I'm a little bit. So, so one question that I have is, can you use this Instead of using this space and completing to get by rudakov shafarevich can you use these twister lines to prove surjectivity of the period map and to prove rudakov shafarevich and then to prove Torelli? So that, because, I mean, the compactification should have some modular interpretation as well. And so, may, so, so my point is that uh, in hot, I mean, in the complex case, you prove surjectivity of the period map using these twister lines. Can you use these twister lines to, to prove uh, rudakov shafarevich in a sort of hands-free? Way. But I think also it is, uh, if, I, if I remember well, also in the Max Motto, mm -hmm. we there is some hypothesis about the crap. Right? Uh, so, so, yeah, but it depends. I mean, so this is not, uh, anyway, Lit Komatsumoto is uh, also uh, something in mixer. I mean, it's not exactly this setting. But, but, the, okay. but they, they use, I, put, I mean, the hypotheses on the prime are, are, are of different natures. So, for instance, you, you use to get potential semi-stable reduction or stuff like that. But here, you have potential good reduction. You know that by rudakov shavarich So this is, so you use only parts of the paper. So let, let's keep any other questions okay. for <laughs> discussion after.